Hello and welcome. Let's get introduced to Krita. So, first off, you'll see we have basic outline. We've got uh, our layers area. Bring this out so you can see it a little bit better. We have layers, brush presets, and tool options. We'll talk more about this later. Have color selectors, tools, uh, uh, these are our menus and our tools. To get started, let's create a new piece. And so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Control N. Control N will bring up a dialog. And from that, I will set my width, my height, and any color that I want. And let's hit Create. Okay. So now we're almost ready to get started drawing, but there's a, a few things that I want to do first of all uh, to make this a little bit easier. Right off the bat with our, our default setup, I have to choose between looking at what brushes I want and what layers I want to be on. Now I don't like this, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to move the brushes. Right now it needs to be popped out of its window, so you see this? This makes it its own window. If we click that, it will pop out and it popped out here down at the bottom. I can move it and if I move it, it will snap as its own menu. This is a floating menu. And if I'm careful, I can See if I can actually grab the corner here. Oh, there we go. So these are all the brushes that we have. I don't much like floating docks very much. I can have it outside of the app. But I want to place it either below layers or if I'm working with a horizontal piece, Sometimes it's nice to put it right underneath. There. This way I can see all the brushes that I have and kind of what they do. Doesn't need to be that big though, so I can scale it down. Okay, so we've moved brush presets. Uh, another thing that we want to move is tool options. Because Tool Options has a lot of cool features that we just otherwise wouldn't be able to see. So let's float the docker. And it's kind of moved down to the bottom. I'm going to drag it right below layers. There we go. That way I can see what sort of options we have available to us. All right. Okay, so now I've got a little bit more options. Let's get to work. Now, what do we need to know to navigate? I'm going to just put down a little bit of pen lines. And just do a little bit of drawing. Okay, so getting started. If I want to move around my canvas, I can hold spacebar and it'll bring up a hand. Now that I have a hand, I can move it, position it how I'd like. Plus and minus are very important for zooming in. So we have our space bar that moves. We have plus and minus, minus and plus. This is what caused us to zoom. And 
and also if we want to change um, and for rotating we can have four five and six four five and six six rotates clock, uh, clockwise four rotates counterclockwise and five resets you so this is our rotate now we can do pinch and hand zoom which you guys can't really see but I'm just using my hand on a screen if you have a touch screen that's easy enough to do um, now let's talk a little bit about the brush. Down here we have our brush picker and we can pick from a myriad of brushes. Right now it doesn't matter which one which one I have because I'm just good. Um, going to show you. Let's choose this strange brush right here where when you double back it makes extra lines. Do a slightly thinner one. and go back. Now that I have two brushes, I can use the slash key to toggle between them. Slash, use this one, press slash again, using that one. It's just a handy way to have two different brushes that you need. Okay. Moving on. For brush size, brush size is really important. And we have two keys, the bracket keys. This bracket and this bracket make the brush bigger and smaller in stepped sizes. I can additionally hold shift and drag back and forth and it will make it larger or smaller. I like the brackets because you have more control and it's in general faster. Big brackets and little brackets. Okay, brush color. We can pick the color from our advanced color picker. We have on one corner of the triangle, we have our brightness and then going the third way we have our saturation and we can keep the same saturation and pull around the color wheel to get complementary colors so we have multiple colors that we can get now the control key is probably one of my favorite uh, see control is the color picker so space moves brush size now what the color picker does is I can like let's say I drew with a red and I'm done with the red I want to pick up that blue again, but I don't know exactly which blue it is. I can hold down control and I can move it over the blue and I can pick exactly what color that is. Now, the color picker also works really well for uh, uh, color blending. So we'll talk about that more later, but the basic idea is if I have blue here, and red here, I can go I can go in and pick that middle color where they overlap and lay that down. Now I can do the same thing on this edge.
and then lay that color down. And do the same thing on this edge and lay that color down. And in that way I get this nice painterly blend between the two colors. All right, so that is the control key. Um, uh, if I want uh, to erase, I can press E and I will erase with the same brush that I had. Press E again to go out of eraser mode and you're back to painting. If I press the dash, now I'm painting with that color, press E, and now I'm erasing with that color. Now let's say I want a straight line. I can hold down the V key, click and drag, and let go, and I will have a perfectly straight line. And the cool thing about uh, the V key is, let's get us something that's pressure sensitive. Uh, the V key remembers how hard we were pushing um, throughout the stroke. So I'll tap and hold the V key. And I'll push hard, I'll push soft, push hard, push soft, push hard, push soft, and let go. And it picks up all that detail. Uh, transform tool is control and T. With the transform tool, it'll bring up this bounding box. I can size it down, squish it, squash it, or hold shift to lock its aspect ratio so it's not distorted. And pressing enter will commit it. Again, I can transform And if I, if I want, I can rotate it by clicking off. I can move it by clicking on it. I can shear it by grabbing the edges. Or to be really fancy, I can hold control and drag and it'll rotate it in 3D. and again enter to commit. So those are the basic tools that you're gonna be using the most. Uh, undo is control Z. Redo is shift Z. And that will go through our history. Undo, and then hold shift and tap, and it does a redo. All right, thank you very much. That's the end of this video.